Greetings and salutations. This is Jason Silverain, and this is the anti-Turing test. I will confess the name of this game did catch my attention, and it's been a mixed experience to have the chance to play this game. This is one of the games I was offered, and it has been curious. It is made by Meta Galaxy Panda, and published by Milk Bottle Studio. It's currently available for £8.29. In its current state, just up front, I cannot re recommend purchasing it. I swear this was only £7 not too long ago. It might have been due to a sale. And whilst the game has had many updates, it's still not polished. And I'm just going to show you what I mean. The deck building genre is becoming bigger and really it's getting to a point where small issues are becoming a little less well unforgivable now when i first played this the tutorial would break and there was a lot of problems with english and bad grammar and it has been improved right now this menu is far better than it used to be and the game story is confusing as hell. I'm just to say that right now. Because of the not quite accurately translated grammar, just reading through this and what it's referencing, my brain just turns off. I get about midway through. I mean, I love this idea of uh, you picking up logs as you play through the game and unlocking more and more story. I was a big fan of it in Tokyo Jungle. And uh, it's this kind of discovering the setting, discovering what's going on. But honestly, there's not really much to work from to begin with. Now, I am presuming that we're some sort of cyborg or AI and we are trying to do something again. I know what the Turing test is. That's like trying to trick people that... Uh, well, to make an AI indistinguishable from a person. And it can be mistaken for a person. So what the anti-Turing test... What? Dif differentiating a uh, AI from a human? Trying to make it... Because it seems to be like humans are dying out and AI and cyborgs are taking over. It's very uh, cyberpunk. And... Because of the scattered information we have here, and you get along the way, I just think it's presented in such a way that there's not really a starting ground to begin figuring things out. It's like trying to figure out the order, trying to figure out a timeline. It's very confusing. Now, there are several characters you can play. I've not even locked this person yet. I've gotten as far as the second boss, and due to several mechanics in the game, I am finding that the balance is all over the place. Now I'm going to go through the tutorial, I've already checked it works, and as you can see not everything is translated. The game visually is very beautiful, I love the design of the cards, I love the design of the characters. Enemies, not so much, I like the backgrounds though. And I enjoy the weapon system which we'll go into in just a moment. However, as it comes to the actual gameplay, it is not very clear. Now, like Banners of Ruin, there is a movement system, though this game implements it poorly. I'm just going to outright say that. And also, it's like, this is your card discard, I so far as I can figure it out. The weapon system you can pump cards into, but once you put cards into them, I think they're banished from the combat. I don't know if they're going to discard or if they completely remove the black combat. It's not clear in the tutorial. And where to begin? Look, you can you can see the enemies are tending to attack. Now I've had times where it says, I'm gonna take six damage here. But later on you start getting people who track particular areas of the battlefield. And it only tells it above their head. So I've taken damage without realizing. Not to mention that these traps, there seems to be no way to remove them, and they stay around for a very long time, and the enemy can just move you around. No. And you can't...
escape mundane damage. It's close in basically on this card, basically means it hits the enemy closest to you. So what you'll have is a lot of enemies in the back who you can't actually hit because you've got these people in the front. And the shield system. Oh, this one is a bit more complicated. Now, you start off with napball shields. It's ridiculous. Um, while you're supposed to build up your stats between plays by earning credits and then buying permanent buffs, like your first shield upgrade gives you four shields. There's very few shield cards in your deck, and they have random effects, and they usually only give you very small amounts. And when the basic enemies are doing 15 damage, and even getting eight shields is difficult, you can see them die very quickly, and it causes a very frustrating early gameplay loop. But yes, we have our initial shield, but we have built in if you want a shield belt. You have a temporary shield that's gonna basically fade away um, every round. The current shield will not refill, and you'll get uh, broken warnings, which is kind of nice. So, in this tutorial, you're sort of taught to use your items down here. Oh, yeah, this is our stamina, by the way. And again, it's just the information is a bit all over the place, so we'll use the item. I do like the animation. We use that shield, that eight one's very generous. The enemy goes at us, dies to four, so we don't take any damage. That's how you pass the tutorial. This tutorial was failable to begin with, and you had several enemies attacking you. And it would crash if you uh, failed the tutorial. Okay, so you hit charge weapons. You, at the start, can unlock weapons, and I think there's only four weapons. You pick which one you want. And they all have their own special effects if you overcharge them or charge them. Now, I like the fact that they get charged. You have this marker here telling you how many points you need to activate the weapon, and then after a while it has a cooldown. So you can't do it every turn. So, go to card rarity. In you go. In you go. But I'm not going to use the card anyway. Can't overcharge it for the tutorial. But it's got a really nice animation of drawing the weapon. It's just a shame that most of the other animations in this game are a little bit lacking, especially on the enemy side. Most enemies only have maybe one or two animations, and there's a lot of times when the animations do not line up with the actions that are happening on your character, or there's no sound effects. Now, and there's also this old positioning mechanic. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you have beacons that affect an area. It's not always clear where those beacons are going to last. I think that could be a lot clearer. You, what you should have is like your tile like being glowing red or you know some sort of indication on the tile itself when a beacon's about to land there. So first things first, we're about to get a load of um, load of beacons land on us. Not that it says that any of the enemies are doing this. So we're going to move backwards because we don't want to move forwards. Pop back. This particular character's gimmick is they can also spend stamina to move back and forth. Now this is, from, this is only a handful of cards that give you stamina and you don't get like a level up system to give you more stamina. I find that that power is useless. You have these cards that go, hey, you can pick from one or two different cards. And I like the fact that, you uh, that was now an explanation of what all these effects are. There we go. And also if the enemy is at the back, we go bam, and they go off. They only overtake uh, eight damage, and that's the tutorial. Now... As I said, the game's lacking a bit. The music gets a little repetitive, though I do like it. Um, we could do with more of it. And here is the level up system. Um, oh, and I've just discovered a bug. I had a load of money from my last run. I came through, I purchased lots of upgrades, and now they're all gone. I had the extra card, I had the power growth. 
I had recovery shield and apparently it didn't save them because I went back to the menu. Oh. See guys, this is why I'm not recommending this yet. Well, there's my last hour or two's worth of uh, progress just gone. And uh, as you can tell, I'm a little bit salty about that. So, there's a lot of enemies as well that have additional effects like pulling me forward. Yeah, like this one pulling me forward. And it's doing 10 damage right away. Let's go here. And we gain two shield three times. Gain four shield, now shield. It recharges. That's not going to help me because I'm going to still take damage. I might as well. Shield. And again, all these cards are far too weak. Far, far too weak compared to the enemies. I should have done that one first. I like the U G O S thing popping up. So I get brought forward. I have weakened. Take the damage. Different than that. Strength is fun, but the enemy has to be here. Forward. And as you can see, the music is drowning out the sound effect. The enemy shields also regenerate. Can I do anything here? No. Throw that there. Actually, I can. Can I put that in there? Well, let's use the big gun. Does 13 damage and gives me 13 shields. That was one of the upgrades I went for straight away. But it's three turns before I can use it again. How is actually helping for the apple? That's much better than me. The character designs are really interesting, and I'm trying to figure out how they draw them. You've sort of seen how the game goes. I don't really need to show too much of this. I might do a playthrough. I'm going to have a look in the leaves. I never go through these. Oh, those are the bottom enemies that you tend to uh, have after the boss. After the first boss, it is. So we're going to start off with all that those enemies. See, I'm about to take 16 damage. I might have a chance in hell of actually not dying. Oh yes, that strikes all the enemies. I forgot about that. Yeah, that, that weapon's like the best weapon.
that Okay. Seems like it's pretty decent. Two consoles. Uh, oh, yeah, twelve. I really like this one. It stimulates the basic like it empowers you. But no, I would like that shield card, because it does damage as well. I'm gonna try another elite. Yeah, it just throws in quite powerful enemies right away at you. Frankly, I have this powering sub. You know, I see no reason not just to use this right from the start, because it is better than all my cards combined. Damage, it would be nice to get that, but let's go for another elite. I'm on a roll here, and it seems like it's just these. But this weapon is really useful. Capacity makes me move. I don't want to do that. Straight is a very useful here.
and I think I'm going to leave it here for now. I have been dragging on, but I hope this was enough of an example. I've actually had a really good run. This is possibly the best run I've ever had in this game so far. <laughs> just with this beginning and destroying all the elites, but it's just because of new gun. Progress is slow, the game is buggy as heck, and it needs work. It's got potential, but it's just lacking at this moment in time. But thank you for watching, and I know I've been a little harsh, but I hope to see this improve. I'll catch you next time.